this is going to help ukraine buy arms and friends american society has been decimated because of drugs and drug related and gun related violence and it's all coming from mexico i think trump is right in trying to build a wall and america will keep on funding these wars even if america does not put marines on the ground america always fights against an enemy that is extremely small in size and then gets beaten by jain friends i'm major goravari and you're watching the chanakya dialogues english Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to press the bell icon. The U.S. Congress has passed a foreign aid package of 95 billion U.S. dollars. 95 billion U.S. dollars. This aid package was stuck for a long time, but let me tell you the details. I'll tell you the details of this aid package and what will go to whom. Why is the U.S. doing it, and what does the U.S. hope to gain out of it? And also a little bit of an insight: what Elon Musk said about the Russia-Ukraine war. Now, ladies and gentlemen, out of this. Humongous 95 billion dollar aid package, 60 billion dollars goes to Ukraine. No surprises there. Here it is: 60 billion dollars will go to Ukraine, 14 billion dollars to Israel for Israel's war against Hamas, 10 billion for humanitarian aid in conflict zones like Gaza, and more than 8 billion dollars for Taiwan and other Indo-Pacific allies. So here is the thing, ladies and gentlemen: 60 billion dollars for Uh, Ukraine and only 14 billion dollars for Israel. Why is that? I I want to analyze this for you so you understand what's happening here. America is giving a lion's share to Ukraine. That is because the people fighting Ukraine, you know, America considers them to be an enemy, which means that America says that Ukraine is fighting the war on its behalf. That is why America is funding the war. If anybody thinks that America is funding Ukraine out of uh, a sense of humanity, that's most certainly not that. It's not about humanity at all, and humanity is not something that you would normally associate with American foreign policy. Here, America is helping Ukraine simply because it hopes, it hopes in the long run, Ukraine will manage to irrevocably damage Russia, at least militarily. that is the hope so hundreds of billions of dollars have been thrown into this war the problem with ukraine is ukraine has been flattened beyond recognition at least the eastern part of ukraine is absolutely gone the country is in a shambles right zelensky you know he's enjoying power uncontrollable power and the fact of the matter is that a lot of people i mean including sema hirsch and sema hirsch is a person you cannot ignore one of the biggest voices as far as wars and foreign policy and and uh, you know foreign affairs are concerned sema has said that this man zelensky is absolutely corrupt his cabinet is absolutely corrupt so i don't know where these 60 billion dollars will go but one thing i can tell you zelensky is going to retire a very very rich man 60 billion dollars to ukraine this will help ukraine not in building up infrastructure not in creating schools or colleges or hospitals or public infrastructure no This is going to help Ukraine buy arms. And where do you think Ukraine is going to use the sixty billion dollars to buy weapons from? It is going to use sixty billion dollars to buy American arms. So basically, what happens is the money travels from the United States of America. It goes to Ukraine and it takes a U-turn and comes back to the United States of America. Essentially, what America is doing is funding its own arms manufacturers. So you'll have a lot of people in America, a lot of weapons manufacturers, being very happy because of this. Uh, see what is happening is that Ukraine does not have a weapons manufacturing capability which is wide ranging. Ukraine was part of USSR when the USSR broke up. You know, 15 odd countries were created, yeah, including Russia. 15 odd countries were created. One of them was Ukraine. So Ukraine has some technology. Ukraine has uh, some infrastructure to create weapons. but to fight a regular conventional war with an adversary as big as russia no it does not it is relying on imported weapons and imported weapons cost a lot of money and this money comes from big time donors like the united states with the caveat that it goes back to the united states of america this is the entire game in the ukraine war america will keep on funding these wars america will keep on funding these wars even if america does not put marines on the ground even if its own air force or navy does not get involved the united states of america and it will not get involved america always fights against an enemy that is extremely small in size and then gets beaten by the same enemy 
America has never fought with a large enemy. After the Second World War, ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America has not fought with anybody of equal size or even a slightly lesser size. America will never get into that sort of war. America is going to attack Iraq, it's going to attack Afghanistan, it's going to attack Vietnam, it's going to attack Korea, it's going to do all of that. It's never going to sort of go and fight somebody its own size. So this is what the United States of America is doing, funding Ukraine. America dare not fight Russia on its own. So America is funding Ukraine to fight against Russia. Now, uh, as I mentioned, $14 billion for Israel's war against Hamas. This money is important. Israel needs all the help and all the funds and all the diplomatic support it can get, all the political support it can get. And uh, Hamas is on the run. In fact, uh, Yahya Sinwar was seen. There was a video uh, by, by the IDF. And I would like you to see that video here. If you see this video, you'll find out that, uh, or you'll see in this video that, you know, they're going, uh, Sinwar and his family are traveling in one of the tunnels under Gaza, and he's there with his brother and his wife and his children, and he's going underground. So, Sinwar does not care whether, whether you know, these guys, uh, the Gazans are getting killed or something like that. So he, he doesn't care about them. What he's caring about is his own family, his own brother, himself, his money, and he's hiding underground. And... Uh, Israelis used AI technology, artificial intelligence technology, to identify him with the size and shape of his ears. That's how they found out that this is Sinwar. They didn't get a good look at his face though, but they figured out with 100% certainty that this is Sinwar. So they're hunting for Sinwar and this money, you know, this, this uh, uh, 14 billion for Israel will go a long way in, in, uh, in tracking down people like Sinwar and tracking down and taking down Hamas infrastructure. Now, $10 billion for humanitarian aid in conflict zones like Gaza. This is also a must. And Gaza, today or tomorrow, must be rebuilt. It has to be rebuilt. Who controls Gaza is a separate matter altogether, but Gaza must be rebuilt. It will be rebuilt. And uh, it will require more than $10 billion. Let me tell you that. It may require hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars over a period of decades to rebuild Gaza because Israel has almost flattened Gaza. Almost flattened Gaza. So it will take a lot more money and it must be rebuilt. But after there is peace and after there is, uh, you know, absolute 100% surety about the safety and security of Israel, that for me is the primary objective, the safety and security of every Israeli, every Jew who lives in Israel. And then America has given money, around $8 billion for Taiwan and other Indo-Pacific allies. This could be Indonesia. I'm guessing it is Indonesia. I don't know because this article does not say Indonesia. It just says Taiwan and Taiwan also will be given money. I don't know what Taiwan will use that money for. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as I think, I think uh, America is funding Taiwan to buy weapons from American manufacturers. You know, Patriot missiles and uh, Javelin anti-tank and it, it could be anything. $8 billion is uh, a lot of money, a lot of money. And Taiwan is a very, very small country. So I don't know what they're planning, but it could very well be uh, Money that takes a U-turn goes to Taiwan, takes a U-turn and comes back to American weapon manufacturers. This research paper says, while Senate Democrats supported the bill, Republicans were divided with some previously voting it down. Former President Donald Trump criticized the bill for lacking funding for securing U.S.-Mexico border. Now, this is something that Trump very passionately believes in. He's saying, don't get involved. And this is what the Republicans are saying today. Do not get involved in wars outside your territory. If something is not threatening the United States of America, don't get involved. If it's threatening, if anything threatens the United States of America, go after it by all means. But don't just start getting involved in wasting precious tax dollars on wars that do not concern you. Yeah. And I think as far as America is concerned, this whole Ukraine-Russia thing was absolutely unnecessary on part of the Americans. What have Americans got to do with uh, USSR and Ukraine? Let them fight it out. Let United Nations exert diplomatic pressure. But when you fund a country for war, right, you're taking it to another level. And this is exactly what Trump is saying in this. I have a lot of disagreements with Donald Trump, but in this, I would uh, support what Donald Trump has to say. He's saying that where is the money for building the wall? You need money to build the wall between the US and Mexico. That is where, you know, America is facing a very, very serious situation of drugs, of, of illegal immigration. And most of that illegal immigration, I'm not saying all of it, I'm saying most of it comes through Mexico. Most of the drugs come through Mexico. And there are tons of drugs which are sent 
every now and then, every month to the United States of America. And friends, American society has been decimated because of drugs and drug related and gun related violence. And it's all coming from Mexico. I think Trump is right in trying to build a wall and trying to build something which is more permanent, which people cannot cross. But uh, I, I, I don't know, honestly. Honestly, I don't know how uh, they'll be able to uh, do this because there isn't much uh, agreement on this. There is no bipartisan agreement as far as a wall is concerned. It's just that Trump who's pushing it, you know. All the Republicans also are not standing uh, stoutly behind Trump for creation of this wall. But Trump wants the wall. And the House Speaker, Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson suggested that the bill might face challenges in the House without provisions addressing border security. Again, supporting Trump, the Republicans. And Democrats stress the urgency of passing the bill, citing its significance and sending a message to Putin and supporting U.S. allies. This is a joke, obviously, you know, supporting U.S. allies. They've never supported any U.S. allies. All the U.S. allies are at one point in time left to die. Ask the Afghan army and they'll tell you. ANA it's called. The Afghan National Army was called the Afghan National Army. Ask them. You know, you fought, you bled, you died with the Americans in Kabul. The Americans promised you everything. They said, don't worry about the Taliban. Don't worry about anybody. We are there. We'll take you back with us to America. Just fight. Fight the Taliban. So these people believed in America. They fought the Taliban. And one fine day, America packed up and went away and said bye-bye. They did take a few people, but very, very few. Because they promised everybody who fought. They said, you know, they, they specifically told people that you are going to America with us and you'll become an American citizen and you'll have a good life. Your kids will have a good life. Your parents will have a good life. Now, all those people are either dead or on the run outside Afghanistan trying to save their lives in hell holes like Pakistan and Iran, etc. I don't know where they are. Anyway, now about this war, uh, you know, Elon Musk has said that uh, Vladimir Putin would be assassinated if he backed out from the ongoing war in Ukraine. Musk believes Putin is under pressure to end the war. Musk made the remarks during an accession on X spaces with US Republican senators who opposed the draft bill that would provide additional wartime aid to Ukraine. So this is that $60 billion, no? $60 billion that has been given to, to uh, Ukraine and another 14 billion given to Israel and 10 billion given to Gaza and 8 plus given to, to Taiwan and other, other nations there. So I don't know which other nations, they've not mentioned it. But So this is what Elon Musk is saying that if now Putin backs out, he will be assassinated, which means somebody will kill him from inside Russia. I think that's what he means. I think that's what he means. That if he backs out, because things have gone to such a fever pitch that there is no backing out now. There is absolutely no backing out for either parties. And there is a lot of pressure. He is saying, this is what Elon Musk is saying, that uh, uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin is under great pressure to end the war. So let's see what turn uh, this war takes and whether it ends soon or continues. Because come February 23rd, and February 23rd is around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. Come February 23rd, uh, we would have entered another year of the Russian invasion into Ukraine. Now, for some question and answers. The first question is from Mish24803, Jaihind Major Sir, Jaihind Ji, Jaihind. Why did Qatar give our officers death sentence under the false accusation? Why was it given after the israel Hamas war broke out, not before? What was their motive? I have already covered this in the past. In many episodes, I've covered this in the past. I don't want to, I'll just, I'll just briefly tell you. This is all about putting pressure, no? This is all about putting pressure. It's all about in India saying, initially, Prime Minister Modi tweeted saying that, you know, we support Israel. And he did not say we support Israel. He says we stand with Israel because Hamas had obviously uh, uh, come onto Israeli soil and killed more than 1,400 of their innocent citizens there. So somebody had to say something from India and we said. So this was not to say that, you know, we don't support the Palestinians, but this was just to say that, yeah, we stand with Israel. And why not? We are friends. And there were a lot of other geopolitical factors. What happened was, I'm sure there was an intervention of outside parties and these Indians were sentenced to death, which was very quickly. Uh, you know, uh, very quickly sort of uh, uh, downgraded to prison sentences and now they're off the hook. They're in India, they've gone to their families. Ra ki sajish. Excellent. Jayan bhai. Jayan. Question is, is there any law to give punishment to these liberal wackos who openly give anti-India stances and divide the public in the name of freedom of speech? If yes, what? No, I don't think there is any law. Though the constitution does say that uh, freedom of expression, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not absolute. This is what the constitution says. Freedom of uh, 
expression is not absolute and there are certain terms and conditions etc but you know the government also would not want to stop people at least speaking unless unless is actually causing some impact the government will not do it lest it be seen as a government that does not tolerate dissent and uh, so i mean these guys speak nonsense yeah and it's okay i mean we'll handle them right not a big problem that's what you and i are here for right they speak nonsense we take them down that's what we do thank you for watching this ladies and gentlemen if you like this video press the like button subscribe to our channel don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai